What's up all you mentees? Welcome to Near Mint Condition and today's episode I'm going to be talking about my top 20 most wanted Marvel Omnibus. So let's do this. And welcome back everybody. Before getting started, if you are a visitor to the channel, please think about subscribing. If you haven't subscribed yet, we put out videos every day. And hit that like button. That all helps with our YouTube algorithm and our channel keep growing. Now, this is a list of 20 Marvel Omnis that I know nothing about. I don't know if they're in the works from Marvel Comics. Uh, this is just my personal list. And this is different from the Tiger Eyes list. I'll be reading those later, uh, probably here in the next couple of days. And I'll be doing the your top 50 that you all voted for. So this is my personal list. And this list was hard because I love limiting myself. So I was like, let's just do 20. Had to move things around. And it's a lot of fun, but it's taken over a month to do. Um, I'll be doing a similar list for X-Men Omnibus Editions. I'll be doing a similar list for Batman as well as Top 20 DC Most Wanted. So come back to the channel for all of that. Come back to the channel regardless. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. But oh gosh, okay, yes. There are some rules. Rule number one, I didn't have any licensed material in here, such as the case of Transformers, G.I. Joe, Romnibus. Oh, man, that just rolls off the tongue. Micronauts, things like that. Come on, Transformers would have definitely been in the top three. But uh, I, I'm playing it uh, safe with just the characters that Marvel does have the right to use or their own characters. So I'm also not putting things in here that are pretty obvious to me that are going to come around like the like Fantastic Four Omnibus Volume 5 or Jason Thor's event, uh, not Avengers, I'm sorry, Thor, things like that. So I figured those will come. This is just my list that I think need to come. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'll be putting the content. I've even mapped these out uh, somewhere down here below. So this is a countdown, so we'll be going from least wanted to most wanted, but still in the top 20, my top 20. Uh, number 20, Hulk by Bruce Jones. I think this one here could be all in one omnibus. And this is a pretty interesting time of Hulk because they had Bruce Jones come in and he writes mainly horror comics or horror stories. Um, but he mixes that in with what was happening with uh, Bruce Banner's life at the time. So it feels a little bit like the, the Hitchhiker meets like the 70s series. The Hitchhiker was a TV show, by the way. The 70s uh, show of Hulk and then mixed in with some comic elements. I really enjoyed it and hopefully we'll get something out of it. Because it's one of those that's they had an OHC, that trade paperbacks. But to have it all in one would be nice. Number 19. Thanos Returns, or Thanos Returns, or also I dubbed it the Annihilation Prologue, because this, well, the last six issues of Thanos really leads into the Annihilation arc. So this collects the Infinity Abyss stuff, the stuff from Marvel Universe The End, even though the Marvel Universe The End is, uh, you could say it's an alternate reality, but it's still a lot of fun, I think it needs to be included in here, and then of course the 12 issues of Thanos, um, Six of them written by Jim Starlin, and the other six, I think it was Keith Giffen that came in and finished that out. Number 18, Dark Hawk. Of course I'm including this. This was on 2019's list. This is the story of Chris Powell, how he finds his amulet, and he gives him power. Does he don a suit? Is he like Ultraman? Does he switch places with somebody that is a superhero? It's a lot of fun, and I, uh, I'm kind of pushing it here, but I'm pretty sure they can include all that content in one omnibus. I mean, he fights... Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, Venom, uh, Tombstone, Tombstone rips out his amulet, and then he gets his own villains too, you know, there's a lot of team ups, this is, you know, New Warriors in there, I love this era, and in the similar era is also number 17, Ghost Rider, Danny Ketch, now I've mapped out the very first one, I know there's more and I want more, but let's not get greedy, uh, so this is the era of... Ghost Rider when Johnny Blaze stopped becoming Ghost Rider and now it's a new kid that becomes Ghost Rider and his name is Danny Ketch. So you have wonderful artwork in here. You have uh, Howard Mackey writing most of this stuff, but this is also the beginning of the Midnight Suns. So this spawned off into other series that I think are just as good, if not sometimes better than Ghost Rider. Can you imagine a direct market cover just being the glow in the dark, uh, uh, the, the flaming... Ghost Rider head from, I think it was issue 16. That would be awesome. Alpha Flight by Bill Mantlo. This is number 16. So we've had Alpha Flight Omnibus by John Byrne. This one could be Alpha Flight by Bill Mantlo and just call it a volume two. 
or make it a volume two. I, I would love this. This is a follow-up to John Byrne's series. And it was hard to choose between Hulk by Bill Mantlo and, or Alpha Flight. But what led me to choose Alpha Flight over Hulk is that missing issue of ROM that they can't, or ROM appearing in that issue of Hulk, they can't um, reprint in a Hulk omnibus. So let's stick with Alpha Flight. I mean, you have the introduction of Lady Deathstrike. Uh, you have Heather like being trained by Wolverine after something happens to the original team leader. And then she becomes the, what was this she called? The Vindicator. Um, and you have artwork at first by Mike Mignola. And then eventually you have artwork in here by Jim Lee. And a whole team shakes up. I really like this era of Alpha Flight, and I hope it is collected some somehow in an omnibus format. Would be awesome. That oversized artwork would look great with a lot of these artists. Then we get, you know, then we could get the James Hudnall run. So number fifteen. This is one that I know a lot of y'all have wanted, but I would love to see the oversized artwork in this. And that is Civil War. And I think this will be two volumes, just with all the amount of comics that are collected in here not only just civil war and all the tie-ins but also the civil war front line which was an 11 issue uh, maxi series and i know all those aren't as important but i think there are things that happen within those uh issues that are kind of important for what happens later on in the marvel universe with the whole initiative movement so yeah absolutely and i would include everything all the issues of spider-man all the wolverine in here and of course the main seven issues wonderful artwork by art mcdivin this has only been available in trade paperback and then a series of oversized hardcovers oh and also a box set but i think two omnis would would cover it number 14 iron man by dennis o'neill denny o'neill at the time so this is a series that i think needs to be collected because it's a follow-up to the Bob Layton and they've uh, the Bob Layton omnibus that we had so this would follow that up nicely uh, this would go all the way to issue 209 and it's kind of a bigger omnibus but it's also Iron Man it introduces us to Rhodey as Iron Man for a while so I think this one is definitely up there I mean there are other Iron Man titles that I would love to see collected in omnibus format like the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. or Matt Fraction which had wonderful artwork by Salvador La Roca but I think this one is one that I've been wanting for a long time and it was smart of Marvel to freaking release the very first epic as a follow-up to that first omnibus number 13 hell yes all day every day Captain Marvel by Peter David volumes 1 and 2 Janice Vell, this is a great series, a very underrated series. It's a series that went through a couple of cancellations, but the fans just kept bringing it back, and there's a reason we keep we, we were bringing it back, because the series was great. Um, and I would, yeah, it, definitely two volumes, because we had the original series in the uh, 2000s, and then we had the follow-up series in 2002. And he was also playing a part in the new Thunderbolts after that. But I would love that. There's a lot of legacy characters in here. Legacy. Uh, if you've read it, you, you understand that pun. But anyway, uh, number 12, me and 20 other guys, I think. And I'm not kidding about that. Nth Man. Uh, this is a book that I've talked about on the channel from time to time. And I remember when I had this in my 2019 Most Wanted, uh, there were only like five people like, yeah, yeah, Nth Man. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. That's probably why it's never going to happen because there's like five of us that are like cheering on. And then through the years of doing the show, I've I'm not kidding. There's been about 20 people that actually know what this series is. So the this series was originally supposed to be like 24 issues or so. But this is all written by Larry Hama. Phenomenal writer. And this is the ultimate nin ultimate ninja. Nth Man World War III. It's about a possible future. And I think the issue with this particular series is that it didn't have any ties to the Marvel Universe other than the Excalibur crossover issue. But... Um, Oh, what was her name? Or what was his name? Alfie Omega. That was the guy's name, the, the, the other guy. And that was like a pun on Alpha Omega. But anyway, Alternate Future, World War III, Ultimate Ninja. It was awesome, man. And the series wrapped up in 16 issues. It's all in one. That's an oversized hardcover. Let's forget an omnibus, though. All right. Here's one that we definitely need to for. Number 11, Avengers Initiative and the Avengers Academy. I don't think one could exist without the other, so I figured why not, you know, both... So the initiative is what sets up the Academy. Initiative is, of course, in the aftermath of Civil War, where you get a whole group of characters that each state in the United States had their own superheroes. Yay, Cannonball represent Kentucky. 
We get Cannonball. But anyway, uh, then we got a whole new cast of kids that are being trained under the initiative. And that spun off into the Avengers Academy. Dance Luck, but mainly Christos Gage is the guy that, behind all of this. It's got wonderful artwork, and I think it rightly so deserves an omnibus treatment. And not a series that I hear a lot of people talk about. There are complete collections available if you want to check them out. They're awesome. Spider Woman. I think this would be two volumes, honestly. Uh, we've got some masterworks, and I would love to see Jessica Drew's stories collected in oversized format. She was one of my favorite characters, even though uh, you know things happened to her in those issues of Avengers, which are include, which I did include in my mapping because I think they are very important to what happens to the character. Of course, all that later on becomes retcon, but anyway, you can find out for yourself. Uh, wonderful artwork in there too, but I would split that up into two volumes. Number nine. Black Panther by Christopher Priest. So, this is a two-volume set, and the reason I put this in here, I said I'm not going to put the obvious things like Jason Aaron's Thor in here, and we know we're going to get some Black Panther Omnis, but I don't think they're going to go with the Christopher P Priest run. I would play it safe, and I think they were, they're they probably going to go with the Reggie Hudlin run, if any run, and then, of course, the Don McGregor for the classic stuff. They, may, they might even do the Ta-Nehisi Coates, I don't know. But I think it's harder to get into the Black Panther by Christopher Priest's uh, era because of his writing style. It takes a while to get into the character. It, it's kind of a slow burn, but man, it's so good, and the payoff is great. But yes, um, as if you've never read it, heads up, it is a slow burn. Number eight, Daredevil by Anna Senti, volumes one and two. A series that a lot of people are divided on, some people hate it, which I didn't know until I was on the internet. I thought everybody loved Anna Senti's Daredevil. Um, it wasn't until, yeah, until I joined a forum decades ago that people were like, yeah, that was trash. And I was like, oh. I didn't know people didn't like her run. I thought everybody liked her run. I loved it. I thought it was great. You had John Romita Jr. on artwork, uh, Typhoid Mary. And I, I can understand why people didn't like aspects of it. I, I get it, especially with the kids. But I enjoyed it. I thought it was awesome, and it rightly deserves to be an omnibus. Daredevil, could, for a long time, has been a character that's had some stellar writing. Uh, now that All this leads into the uh, D.G. Chichester Chester Chester run number seven plugging in those holes amazing spider-man by David Michelinie and Mark Bagley so if you've noticed in my mapping I left out some issues and that is of course the issues of maximum carnage now this is an omnibus that I would love to have this is one that would really fit in between the Eric Larson spider-man omnibus and the clone saga part one but also, right after the Spider-Man vs. Venom omnibus, because that all collects the Maximum Carnage issues. So for me, I think this is one. It's a big omnibus, but I think it can be done, and it would just plug that hole in between the Eric Larson years and the Clone Saga. But you also need Spider-Man vs. Venom, because that's the only way to collect Maximum Carnage in oversized format. So keep that in mind. Number six, hell yes. Punisher by Greg Rucka, all day, every day. This is a series that ended up with three trade paperbacks. I don't even know if it got a complete collection, honestly. Um, this is one that has wonderful artwork by uh, Marco Cacchetto, or Cacchetto. And right now, he's blowing up because of his art in Daredevil. But this is the first time I remember seeing his artwork. And I'm like, oh, wow. This art needs to be in oversized format. So I hope one day. It wouldn't be a big omnibus. Um, and it's Punisher. He doesn't. He hasn't been getting a lot of uh, love lately in the oversized format treatment. But hopefully, they'll do this. Or it was between this and the Carl Potts era of their uh, Punisher for me. But I went with Rucka just because I think it would sell better uh, because of the art. And it's Greg Rucka. Number five. Oh my gosh. This is uh, one of my four volume sets, but I don't care. Captain America by Mark Grunewald. This needs to happen. This is such a great era of Captain America that a lot of people dismiss because a lot of people think of Mark Grunewald's Cap Wolf, Captain America, or the fighting chances, or Captain America with that silly uh, armor that he wore towards the end of Mark Grunewald's run. But they don't remember the classic stuff that he wrote, the Captain America No More, the introduction of Battlestar and U.S. Agent. Um, there's a lot of phenomenal freaking stories in here long before Cap Wolf. 
And I'll take Cap Wolf all day. You put Cap Wolf on the freaking cover, I'd buy it. Uh, but I think this would be a series of either three or four Omnis. And it and it's to me, this is classic Captain America. This is the next classic era that I would love collected in oversized format. And speaking of classic, leads us to number four and a very underrated run, and that is Thor by Tom DeFalco and and, and Ron Friends. Honestly, uh, he did a lot of the artwork in here too. But this would be a two-volume set, and you could even do Thunderstrike as an oversized hardcover. That, that I would be down with that. But nobody talks about this story. Everybody's Jason Aaron, Walter Simonson. Uh, but to me, this was just as good as those runs. I love this era of Thor. And again, it's, it's Tom DeFalco who doesn't get a lot of praise for his Fantastic Four run, his Spider-Man, his Spider-Girl. But out of those, I think I would go with Thor because it, it's a solid freaking awesome story. And we're getting movies, so you know the more chances of these Omni editions coming out. Number three. Since we've had the classics, this is the one that I want, and that is the What If, the 90s volumes. So this would probably be three volumes, and it, I say 90s, it really started in 1989, but this is the stuff that I grew up with. I, I couldn't find a single one of the classic issues when I was a kid. It wasn't until later that I found them and I started buying them up, but when I grew up as a kid, I loved the What If stories from the 90s. I mean, they were dark, none of them ended happy. Some of them were silly, like who's, uh, what if nobody was watching The Watcher? And then later on, the series changed. Instead of saying, like, what if Hulk killed Wolverine or what if Phoenix had not died? I think they started saying, what if starring, what if starring Sabretooth, what if starring the Black Knight? And they had several stories in there, maybe an anthology. But I would love to see all of that collected. So I hope the success, I hope it's successful, the what if classics. But this is the one that I really, really want. Avengers by Roger Stern. Of course, Uncle Rog deserves his Avengers run collected in omnibus format. Granted, you know, he... he I, I don't know what it was like working with uh, Roger Stern, but I know that he didn't really get to wrap up his Amazing Spider-Man run, and he didn't get to wrap up his Avengers run the way that he wanted to. But he, he ended up leaving some notes, so I assume, you know, we got most of it. I just remember X-Men versus the Avengers, like, he didn't wrap up this. He had dispute over how that should end. But anyway, I would love to see this collected. It's some of the best Avengers run, and I think it's the one that rightly needs to be collected. Because, you know, besides the Silver Age stuff, I think this stuff to me is classic. And the stuff I grew up with, you've got artwork in there by Big John Buscema too. And the Avengers lineup was constantly shaking. And there's a lot of it already available in the um, epic format, but I think it needs an omnibus format. Alright, number one. I thought about doing some honorable mentions, but like the Marvel Swimsuit Edition, that would be cool, you know. Uh, or Sleepwalker Omnibus, but I think, oh gosh, Agents of Atlas, okay, 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 Agents of Atlas will be awesome, but alright, but my number one, it's one that I think a lot of people have been wanting, it's an era that it, none of this stuff has been collected in oversized format, and that is the 2099 era, so that is Spider-Man 2099, so Peter David again, kicking all kinds of ass on all cylinders, introducing us to the character of Miguel, who is the future Spider-Man, has an awesome costume, uh, most of the artwork in here by the wonderful and talented Rick Leonardi. Um, and I think this could be done in... Honestly, it'd probably be two Omnis, just looking at the crossover stuff. But it's an era of Spider-Man that is, you know, it's very, very, very much wanted in co uh, complete collection. Because a lot of people grew up during this era in the 90s and now they've grown up they got jobs and they want to relive that era of their childhood so i remember the 2099 era was just blowing up it was huge when uh, in the 90s i think i was in high school when all this stuff was coming out but people were still getting it i was enjoying it i got x-men 2099 i got some issues of uh, spider-man i didn't read them all until later but yeah this is a solid series and now that he's appeared in spider-verse may end up getting his own movie or spin-off uh show whatever that would be awesome to collect all that but that is my list that is my list um if these books ever come out don't forget to check out our sponsor
CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you Minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was my list of the top 20 most wanted Marvel Omnibus. Again, this is just my list. I'd love to know what yours are. Maybe you voted in the Tiger Eyes poll, and I'll be, like I said, I'll be doing the top 50 of that um, sometime here in the next couple of days. But let me know what yours are if you didn't vote. Yeah, leave those comments down below. You know, I thought about uh, choosing some covers for this. Maybe I'll do that the next time around. I'll choose like a cover, what I think should be the cover, and then what should be the variant. That's also a lot of fun looking through these. But uh, that's it. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. We're on Spreadshop where you can get our logo on stickers, t-shirts. We also have different... Uh, different logos in there different brands in there you can get on hats t-shirts mugs whatever it is and we're also on patreon amazing ways to support the channel and thank you so much to our existing patrons couldn't do shows like this without all of you and more importantly everyone stay healthy stay safe much love